lecture number nine, the application layer. When we're going to be discussing artificial intelligence, what is AI? Systems that act like humans, systems that think like humans, systems that think rationally, systems that act rationally. Systems that act like humans. The art of creating machines that perform functions that require intelligence when performed by people. The study of how to make computers do things at which, at the moment, people are better. The Turing test proposed by Alan Turing in 1950 was designed to test act like humans. The computer passed the test if a human interrogator, after posing some written questions, can't tell whether the written responses came from a person or a machine. The total Turing test includes a video signal so that the interrogator can test the subject's perceptual abilities as well as the opportunity for an interrogator to pass physical objects to the subject. For a computer to pass a total Turing test, it needs the following capabilities. Natural language processing is the ability to enable a person to communicate to a computer in natural English. Knowledge representation, you need to be able to store what the computer knows, sees, and hears. Automated reasoning, to use the stored information to answer questions to draw new conclusions. Machine learning. It needs to adapt to new circumstances and detect and extrapolate patterns. Computer vision. To perceive objects and to know what they are. Robotics. To manipulate objects and move about. These six disciplines comprise most of the study of artificial intelligence. Systems that think like humans. The automation of activities we associate with human thinking. Activities such as decision making, problem solving, and learning. Here's a question. If you don't know how humans think, how are we going to make computers think? So this is a big issue here with think like humans. Without understanding truly how a human thinks, it's hard to make a computer think. But in the field of cognitive science, it brings together computer models from AI and experimental techniques from psychology to construct precise and testable theories of the workings of the human mind. Systems that think rationally study of the computations that make it possible to perceive, reason, and act. The Greek philosopher Aristotle was one of the first to attempt to codify right thinking into a reasoning process known as the laws of thought. For example, Socrates is a man. All men are mortal. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. So by combining the premise one and premise two, we get a nice logical conclusion. And this is the whole concept of thinking rationally. These laws of thought were supposed to govern the operation of the mind. Their study initiated the field called logic. Logicians in the 19th century developed a precise notation for statements about all kinds of things in the world and about the relationships among them. By 1965, programs existed that could in principle solve any solvable problem described in logical notation. Two main obstacles to approaching AI not easy to convert all information about the world into logical notation because everything is not 100% known. Even if you could, even a problem with just a few dozen facts can exhaust the computational resources of any computer. Systems that act rationally. A system that does the right thing given what it knows. For example, quests for artificial flight succeeded when the Wright brothers stopped imitating birds and learned about aerodynamics. So systems that act rationally, the goal is to just do the right thing and not worry about trying to do it like a human or even think like a human. Now I'm going to go through a, a game search example from AI. So say you got player 1 and their mark is X. You got player 2 and their mark is O. And the rules are you can place your mark in 1, 2, or 3 spaces per move. The first player to reach the end wins, and the game board only has five slots. So let's play a simple game. Move one, the computer puts an X in spot one. Move two, the human player puts two O's in the next two spot. Move three, player one wins, which is the computer because he adds two X's and his mark is the last one. So how do we know what is the optimal move for this? How do we know what move to make? And to determine that, there's an AI search algorithm called min max algorithm. And we start with an empty game state with five spaces. So the first move, player one, which is a computer, he has three options. He can put one X, two X's, 
or three axis. At the next level, player two has these sets of moves for this one move with one X. And for the move with two axes, it has three more moves. And the move for with three axes, he only has two moves. Notice at this level, this game is one and this game is one, but we still have other games that are unfinished. So we got to keep going down the tree. So player one moves and he has these options from this scenario. And he has these options from this scenario. And has these options and so on and so on. Now we completed this level and we have a few finished games we can see here, but we also still have some unfinished games we got to keep going. So the next move is player two. And so here are player two possibilities based on that move. And here's the next set of moves from this particular state. And here's the move from this state, the move from this state, and we see we have all the moves in this level mapped out. But there's one more move left because the game is still not complete because we have these, these uh, last unfinished game and it's player one turn and a move is made. So now we've written out the entire game space and in, and in artificial intelligence game search that's the whole goal is to play the entire game inside the computer and then select the best moves. So now let's determine how we select the best move. First I need to introduce you to the concept of a zero-sum game. A zero-sum game means that if player one wins then player two must lose or they both could potentially draw. There only could be one winner and one loser or a draw. That's the only possibility in a zero-sum game, which means both of us cannot win. So under those scenarios, player one winning I'll sign a plus one, player two winning will sign a negative one, and the sum of these two outcomes is equal to zero. So the first thing you want to do is you want to label all the leaf nodes where the game has terminated. So in this case, player one wins. In this case, player two wins. And you label all the nodes where a win state has already been determined. Next, you need to transfer the values up to the start. So we need to find the max value for player two at this particular level. So player two has made this move. Now it's player's one turn. And this only possibility you have is a plus one. So this number gets moved back here. Now this level is complete. So we move up the tree to the next level. And it's player one player one has moved. Now it's waiting on player two to move. So player one is gonna take a min for, for, for player one. Alright, so it's player one has just moved, now he's waiting on player two to make a move. Now player two is the human, so what's player two gonna do? Player two can do what's best for player two. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the minimum of these choices, and the minimum choice is a negative one. And so that's transferred to this this node. And the rest of this move and this move is already predetermined, so we transfer negative ones up to there. Now we move up the tree some more. And player two has just made a move and he's waiting on player one to move. And so now what we gotta do is find the max move for player two. Because the max move means a win for player two. So if player two is waiting on player one to make a move, what will player one do? Player one is going to do what's the maximum best thing, which is a plus one. So that's transfer there. In the next stage, we got two possibilities, a negative one and a plus one for this, for this move. What's going to happen? A plus one. And finally, for this last move, there's only one possibility, so that's a plus one. Now move down to the next level of the tree, this move here, a negative and a plus. What's going to happen? The max, plus one. Let's move on. There's only one possibility, so it's a plus one. Move to the next one's only one possibility, so it's a plus one. So we've, we've filled out this level. Level. Now we're moving up another level. Player one has just moved, and now he's waiting on player two to move. And so what's going to happen? He's got to find a minimal possibility. And the minimum possibility here is, is plus one because it's on the other possibilities. So that gets a plus one. You move to the next level. What's the minimum? So what would player two do? Player two will do the best of player two, which is a negative one. So negative one moves up. And finally, the last move you got a plus and a minus, and so if this is player's two turn, player two is going to do what's best in player two, which is a negative one. So that moves up the tree. And finally, we go back to the start, and we got three possibilities. We got a plus, a minus, and a minus. And so a plus means player one wins, and a minus means player two wins. So what's going to happen? A plus one. So that is the move to make. And thus the move is you put one X in the first spot, and you guarantee victory. That ends our lecture on artificial intelligence.